All right, good morning, y'all. Sorry, I was going over a few things. Um, woo, we got the sun shining in now. Where's that coming from? Right there. There we go. This does not need to look like a Star Trek film. Um, let's see, let me... Maybe that'll do. Maybe, 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 maybe not. Alright, so. There we go. Eh, sort of. Somewhat, a little bit better. There we go. Okay. Awesome. Morning. <laughs> Glad we could finally get started. Um. Anyway, uh, hope everybody had a good week this week, um, and uh, I uh, I know I did my Sunday live last week and cleaned the shop. I didn't clean that, obviously. Um, after Sunday, I did not come back out here until last night to make sure the heat was cranked up. Um, so I'm going to actually turn that down just a smidge. There we go. That way it's not buzzing our way in the background. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, let's see. We got Rune, Ronald, uh, Peter, Fred Flintstoner. Um, let's see, G Keyman, good morning. Um, no, that wasn't a... Uh, that wasn't duct tape. That was the little uh, foam insulation panels that I have up here. Um, I put a picture on Twitter of how I sort of um, did things over here. Um, for one, I put my camera arm. I actually drilled a hole into the windowsill right here. And so I have this whole articulated boom arm. And... Uh, you know, give me the same camera angles, but I don't have to work around anything. So, yeah, um, that'll be nice. Um, I'd like to try to get a couple, like, actual picking videos or something done um, today while I'm out here. Just to, you know, just to try to get something out there. Um, and also see how this works. It's not completely what I want because the hole diameter is slightly larger than the peg that's on my boom um, and so it doesn't fit tightly but if I think what I need and I don't really need it to fit tight tight what I need is for it to be stabilized a little bit better um, if the peg were a little bit longer on it, I think that would work. Or also what I'm thinking is doing some sort of, um, <clears throat> like some sort of long screw with a washer on top so that it catches on the boom arm. I don't know, I'll, I'll figure it out. I kind of know what I want with it. Um, and so I'll just have to play around with it, get that fixed up. Um, but then I also, right here under the windowsill, uh, I put up, I got a little, uh, LED strip light that mounts like kind of the, one of those under the shelf lights and I love it. I mean, it brightens everything up down here so much and we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Um, but I really, really like it. I still have my little spotlight lamp you know, over here, but it's kind of busted and it also takes up some room. So I'm thinking about doing the same thing to it that I did the camera boom. Um, I don't know if I want to put it in the windowsill as well, or if I want to use a clamp. Um, 
got one of these clamps here that goes on the edge of the desk. Uh, and then of course the, the peg from the boom arm goes in there and, um, that way I could reposition it. But my goal is, and, and what my long time goal has always been is to have any lights or cameras all above where the action is. Um, that way the desktop is cleared out. I don't have to worry about anything getting in the way. I don't have to worry about bumping anything. I mean, you know, I can shake the table and the camera just barely shook. So I, I like that. Um, but anyway, uh, the other, other thing I was going to do is get some foam core board and cut it specifically to block out the light from the windows. Either that or probably what would be a little bit easier is try to get some shades to put up there. But I don't know. I, I mean, I like looking out the windows when I'm in here and, and not doing any video stuff. Um, but the shades might interfere with the way I've got the camera arm set up now. I, I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to play with some things and see what, see what I can work out. Um, and no, that's not Heineken. It's Perrier. Um, <laughs> I know what y'all thinking. Um, but anyway, then I also want to get uh, some more of these LED lights and either get one of the ones that hangs and then somehow hang it up above here or I, I don't know. I've got ideas. It's just implementing them. Um, so anyway, yeah. Um, let's see. Good morning, Dave. I don't know if I've seen you here before. Is this your first time? Um, let's see, Brian, good morning. James Randolph, good morning. Let's see, Pocket Women, good day. Uh, <laughs> James, yeah. <sighs> I've used uh, foil. Actually, when I was at the apartment, I used foil a few times in the window just to uh, block it out whenever I was having really bad lighting problems. Um, and of course, I used it in the bedroom a few times um, when I was on night shift during the summer. That was the best way in the world to block out the sunshine um, to where I could sleep. Uh, I don't know about that out here because I want something that's easily removable and replaceable. Um, so I'll figure something out. Uh, but mainly the other thing is to get enough light reflected onto what the videos are doing. And like I said, when I move the camera around here in a little bit, we'll, we'll look at uh, how the light is. Y'all can let me know how it looks on your end. Um, I know from from just sitting here looking at it, I can see a heck of a lot better. So, um, better, better off with Heineken, you don't drink. <laughs> yeah, I don't drink beer, so. Um, but anyway, uh, I guess what we're going to do today is something we talked about last weekend and um, this past Sunday, we talked about it, but y'all know that I'm trying to get my locksmith license, and in North Carolina, there's a 150-question test for that, and, um, you know, I know a lot of the, the basics in those categories. I've taken a few practice tests online, and... Um, there are a few few sections I need to brush up on. 
So I figured what we could do is pick something out of the study guide and kind of go over it today. Something maybe I've not done in a while. Um, and I've got all the tools to where we can do it practically because if you're like me, the way that I learn is I'll read about it in a book and then try it hands-on. And if I can do it hands-on then and know what to look for and know what to do hands-on, then I can I remember it. I remember the principles behind it. Um, so we're going to look at some of that. Um, I can't show you... I, I Well, I won't show you what exactly is in here. Like, I can't go through and scan the pages or flip through one by one because they do sell these. Um, it funds the board, and I really don't want to piss anybody off before I even get started. So we'll we'll go through. I'll read um, whatever section uh, we might have, and then uh, just kind of go from there. So let's see here. UK lock picker. Good morning. I don't think you've been here before either, have you? Um, well, welcome. Let's see, who else do we have? Let's begin. Good morning. Haven't seen you in a while. Um, yeah, everybody's showing up this morning. Do they have a shop portion on the test? Um, not really. Um, no, no, not really like a shop. Like, like, are you talking about setting up shop or doing shop or whatever? Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Good thing about lockdown online studying. Yes. Yeah. Room. That's exactly what, what I'm doing here. And then, uh, you know, trying to put some of that together. Um, really, the the sections that I know I'm going to have difficulty with are the automotive, because let's face it, y'all have never seen me talk about or mess with automotive in any way, shape, or form. Um, and I need... I need to get some automotive stuff um, just to learn on. And, I mean, even here in the U.S., we, we don't see a lot of the old stuff. You know, like, Jason works on the older stuff a lot. And that's, you know, like a lot of the stuff that he shows is fairly simple when it comes to, you know, making a key for it, decoding it, um it's almost like just a regular wafer lock or excuse me as the guide refers to it a disc tumbler lock which I guess that is the appropriate name um, as opposed to disc detainer it's disc tumbler um, but anyway um, you know here in the US we're going more we either have the the wafer type locks like you see um, Jason work on, or you have, um, some of the newer ones that have the finger pin slider mechanisms. Um, and honestly, I know nothing about those other than what y'all have seen. Um, yeah. So, uh, basic master king, I've done some master king, but I've always had the aid of a computer and somebody else uh, to help me out with it. So we may look at that. Um, and then there are only a few questions on safe locks and there are safe combination locks and electronic safe locks. Um, those, I, I still, I couldn't explain to you 
in more than just a Google GIF file level um, how these work. I, I, I've, I've watched videos on it. I've tried to learn, tried to read. Again, I sort of know the basics, but I have no clue how it relates to, you know, an actual, like, vault safe. I imagine it's fairly similar in principle. Um, one locksmith here in North Carolina said um, on the test, as far as the safe combination locks go, you need to know about uh, the drop points and also relockers. So we might... Might go over that a little bit. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Let's look here. Do, 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 do. All right, UK lock picker. Appreciate you. You know. Yeah. Come on by. We're here every Saturday morning. Well, almost every Saturday morning. Um, around about 10 a.m. Eastern, so let's see, that is about five hours behind the UK, so about 15 hours your time. Um, <laughs> yeah, Rune, yeah, yeah, tennis ball or slim gym for automotive. Um, yeah, guys, I've got a, um... I think I've showed it before. I, I know I showed it on my cleaning video uh, during the live cleaning of the shop. Exhilarating. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I showed a uh, a Lagarde safe um, combo that I have. And it's in pieces. Um, Chris Aaron sent it to me and... I really have no clue how to get it back together. And so I I would love love to see a video or have somebody explain it to me uh to put it back together to where it works. Um and you know there've been some discussion with the uh Logsmith licensing board here in the state about actually subdividing um, categories of licenses to where uh, certain locksmiths, like basically you have an entry level general locksmithing license. And then from there you can get like either an additional license or an endorsement to your license um, as far as like safes or access control. That's another thing. Um, Access control should, um, I mean, I get the gist of it. It's not that difficult, I don't think. Um, you know, I know the important points with access control are you want it to fail safe, fail secure. Um, and in North Carolina, even though it's run on a low voltage uh, electrical current, um, and there is a low voltage electrician's license in North Carolina for it to be access control. You actually have to be a licensed locksmith because of the way that the statutes are written. Um, so, and I believe I just covered everything that there's going to be on the test about access control basics. I don't know. We'll look at it too. Okay, UK lockpicker. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd like to see some of those safe locks. Um, I mean, I know Sparrows has the has their practice like combo or safe combo box kit whatever thingy. Um, and I've thought about investing in that. Um, but I don't, I don't know. Um, 
I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let's see. Morning, Miko. Glad you're here. Okay, yeah, that would be that would be good. Um, yeah. Uh, UK. Um, my email address is in the about me section or info section on my YouTube channel. Um, it's lockpickingpatrolman at gmail dot com. Um, so yeah, anything like that, I would I would appreciate it. Um, combo is easy to assemble. Okay, well. Um, Yeah, automotive, I, I know from some of the practice tests that I've taken, um, like a GM 10 cut, the sum of all of the cut depths must equal an even number. I did not know that until I started taking some of these practice tests. Which, I mean, that's pretty cool to know because... If you're trying to decode it and you come up with an odd number, then obviously you've done something incorrectly. So, you know, you go over and, and uh, figure out where you screwed up. Um, yeah, Peter... Um, Peter, you might try calling or uh, getting a hold of uh, Tyler Thomas um, because he is the Southeast uh, president of Aloha and he could definitely give you all kinds of information about that. Um, I would try giving him a contact if, you know, giving him a shout if that's what you're trying to, uh, trying to get at. Um, See, North Carolina doesn't recognize their, you know, Aloha's locksmith uh, tests or registration or anything. So, it would basically be me paying double money for both of that, and I don't really want to do that, um, especially not starting out. So, because I'm on a budget anyway. I mean, I... I had to go yesterday to Walmart and get my loaf of bread out of layaway. So, you know. Um, let's see. Okay, James. So you're you're an access control guy. I will remember that. Yeah. Well, thank you, Fred. I mean, I, I did just talk for like 10 minutes about my lighting. So, you know, once the lights are turned off, I'm not nearly as bright as I appear. <laughs> um, let's look here. But yes, I mean, a lot of people, I, you know, there's one locksmith company in the Charlotte area that... Um, came to do some work at the uh, state office, one of the state offices when I was stationed there, and they had to come on three separate occasions to fix the same issue, um, and wound up selling them new cylinders, uh, re-keys, new keys to the building when all that happened literally was a lever handle broke. It, it was just the lever handle on the outside of the door broke off and uh, needed to be replaced, you know, which it was, it's an exit device on the inside and lever handle on the outside. Took three separate trips before they got it right. And on one of those trips, I actually had to like help the guy because he was hopelessly lost and actually googling like on his phone I walked over just to kind of you know because I was interested you know and uh, I walked over he was googling 
on his phone how to do what he was trying to do. And that company also, like the the owner of it, he'll go on YouTube and Twitter and everything and talk for days about how you know his company is a good company and why it's a good company. And he spent less than five minutes talking about anything related to locksmithing or physical security. I don't want to go to work for there. Um, so to round it back out, yeah, I think that some people have passed the test that maybe, I mean, I, I don't want to say shouldn't have, but perhaps I am worrying a bit too much about it, but I want to make sure. Um, Let's see. Yeah, Fred, a lot of uh, a lot of places don't require a license. Um, you know, just need to register as a business or, or get a business license, and that's it. So, yeah. Um, good morning, the Lock Sportcast. I haven't seen you here as well. Um, so welcome, your first time. Um, I have seen, I've seen you on Twitter and I've, I've seen some of your videos pop up, but I've not, honestly, I've not had a chance to watch them. Um, but I've been meaning to because you, um, you got a pretty good thing going on from what I can tell. So yes, I will check out your channel, but thank you for coming over here. Um, <laughs> GQ man, no, he, uh, no, he, he wasn't pulling up, uh, Jason's videos, and, yeah, Rune, I, I thought about telling him to do that, but I didn't want to, and I, I just kind of, he was trying to figure out how to, what was it? Um, I believe he was having trouble getting the lock cylinder back into the lever set. He disassembled it because after the first time they came out and replaced the outside lever on that door, it fell off. Just, just fell off the door. The outside fell off. Explain that one to me, how it falls off. Like, it, it, the bolts, they didn't have the bolts correct, and I don't believe they had the bolts tightened to the right points. And so the whole damn thing just fell off. That's pretty embarrassing because, I mean, that's their second call out that it's fallen off. And then the third call out was because the new keys that they cut for the back door, which is where the majority of the employees go in and out, um, did not operate the lock at the front door, which is where they have to come in to uh, open up the office in the morning, disarm the alarm, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so, yeah, it, they, I, I don't know. I'm going to quit talking about them right now. Um, let's see. Good morning, Sturdy Lock. Okay, Peter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, hey, you never know. Um, you know, my plan is to, to get my license and start doing things on the side um, kind of, you know, little residential or small commercial jobs as I can get them. I know I can get the word of mouth out there to get started. Um, and then just take it from there because I can't afford to quit my day job, so to speak, and try to do that full time without getting established. Um, so yeah, I mean, it may do something and you know, it's like my dad. My dad was a licensed electrician, um, you know, for, for 
25, almost 30 years. And aside from his job as hospital maintenance supervisor, he, he had his own business, but all he did was little residential work, um, you know, installing light fixtures, ceiling fans, you know, running a new outlet, replacing outlets. Um, he did some bigger jobs, uh, just depending on the time frame, if they weren't rushed. Um, but he always did it, you know, either in the evenings after he got off from work or on the weekends. And that's where I learned a lot about electricity. I promptly forgot about it after about the time that I turned 23, 24. Um, and I don't know why I kind of enjoyed it, but, um, but yeah, you know, that's, that's the way he did. And he made, you know, a good little bit of extra money doing that. Um, morning, Dana. I don't know if I said good morning to you earlier. But good morning. Uh, yeah, Bryn, we've got a uh, got a lot of people here today. Very cool. Yeah, Peter, that that is me. Except for the fact that here in North Carolina, you must have a license in order to um, do certain work um, with locksmithing, you know, unlocking services, rekeys. Um, you know, you, you're required to have a license for that. So, anyway, um, let's go to the study guide and see what we can do. Um, Let's see. Uh, I'm comfortable with... We, we have... I will read the, the sections in here. Um, or the, the table of contents. Uh, section 1, we have codes and code equipment. 2 is cylinder servicing, pin and disc. 3 is identifying and duplicating keys. 4, professional opening techniques. Five is lock set functions. Six is lock set servicing. Seven is basic master keying. Eight is domestic automotive locks. Nine is foreign automotive locks. Ten is safe combination locks. Eleven is electronic safe locks. Twelve is access control basics. And thirteen is North Carolina locksmith licensing regulations. Ah. Um. Sorry, the dry weather here today. We we got some snow last night, just a little bit, and we had some good icing this morning. But other than that, the air is like really dry today. Um. All right, so let's go to section four, professional opening techniques. Pretty sure I know a little bit about that. Um, we've done videos recently on cylinder servicing uh, because that basically um, goes over just putting one, you know, taking one apart, putting it back together. Uh, talks about the differences in key and knob and key and lever, uh, mortise cylinders, rim cylinders, profile locks, interchangeable core, uh, the increments um, for pinning. See, then it has a whole little section on quick set smart key. Um, and how to take that apart, pictures of it, and then also the Schlage Secure Key. Which I noticed last week, I went and visited mom and dad. 
and they actually have Schlage secure key on their door. Um, I told them when it messed up on them to let me know and I would replace it. Uh, identifying and duplicating keys. Um, it basically just talks about the types of keys. Um, you know, flat key, bit key, barrel, milled. Um, then it talks about multiplex key systems. Um, it has some diagrams about that. As such, just the Schlage multiplex diagram. Um, I think they borrowed a lot of this from. Uh, they they actually give credit that they borrowed a lot of this from Schlage and also from uh, uh, Tool and some other Locksport um, organizations. So let's see here. And every section is really good. Like every section has a glossary, and and I can show you this part because the uh, glossary is actually from the Tool uh, glossary. Um, they give full full credit to Tool. Um, tool, of course. Tool. Um, Let's see. All right, so we can look at this. Um, goes over after the glossary. It goes over the philosophy of opening techniques. Um, says uh, lockouts occur for all sorts of reasons. Um, must gain as much entry or as much information as possible by testing. The operation of the lock set involved in asking questions of the client. Uh, main goal is to do no damage. Um, if it's necessary, then you limit that damage to just uh, the most easily and inexpensively replaced. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Let's see. For ordinary lockout, um, in which the lock is in perfect working order, but the key is on the wrong side of the door, picking is one very good technique. However, this technique requires a great deal of skill, which can only be developed through practice. However, also sometimes it simply doesn't work. Y'all remember this guy from last Saturday? Yeah. Little cretin didn't want to open up on camera. I got him open later. I posted a picture to Twitter to prove it, too. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Must always have a plan B in mind. Uh, bypass technique might yield quicker results. You know, the locksmith company that I was talking about earlier, two of their locksmiths said that uh, they never, ever picked a lock when trying to gain entry for a lockout. They said that it was too much of a waste of time. No matter what the lock was, they drilled it. Well, you know, when somebody, when, when you lock yourself out and you call a professional to come and... Uh, get you back into your house or or your business or whatever you know you really don't want to have to pay for a whole brand new lock and that's I mean that's going against what it says here um you know we you know, like, Roan, I know we've talked about before, you know, where you are, drilling a lock is pretty much the only way that you can be effective in, you know, your time and money management scenario. You drill the lock out if somebody's, you know, locked out. Um, 
and I understand that over there, but here in the U.S., we there's no excuse to not try to pick to start with. I mean, I don't see it. Um, you you shouldn't go to drilling just at the first. You know, I've picked some locks that you know I've had. They they were mine. You know, the times I locked myself out, the time um, one of my good friends and co-workers, he called me because his mother had locked herself out of her house. Um, you know, and it might have taken a minute. And you might have some more back pain because you got to crouch down just to get the right angle or something. But, you know, it, it didn't take that long. And I didn't go straight for the drill. I don't know. Let's see here. Uh, just, just looking at the chat real quick. Um, Yeah, Fred, I mean, for me, it's not, wanting to do this is not quite so much just about the money. Um, I'm pretty much maxed out in what I'm making, you know, with my job as, as a police officer and, you know, with my agency, I'm maxed out. Um, I could go to a different agency, but... I really don't want to um, because I've got seniority built up. I've got, you know, I, I hate to say it, but I don't get messed with that much. I do sometimes, um, like I was talking about last weekend. But, you know, for the most part, people don't just mess with me. They don't change me up. They don't move me around or, or have me go do... BS things. Um, I've been around long enough now that that doesn't happen. Um, and going to a different place, just, you'd have to start all over. I mean, not going through the academy, start all over, but start all over, you know, now. And there are a bunch more reasons. But, so, wanting to go into locksmithing is not just about that, but it's also about you know, I want to be in business for myself and be able to control that, um, be able to to treat customers the way that I want to. Um, that's why going to work for one of these larger logsmiths in the area, you know, yeah, I could sign up today, get my license tomorrow and start getting paid, you know, a week from now and get you know, get a fully equipped vehicle to bring home. <sighs> but at what cost? You know, it, if they want you to move as quickly as possible through calls and upsell stuff as much as you can, uh, no, I'm, I am too independent. Um, that's one thing I've loved about the agency that I work for now is... You know, we kind of have to work independently um, without very much direct supervision. And I've been given some of the most remote assignments where, you know, I'm 250 miles away from the headquarters. You know, if I'm the only one around, I need to make a decision right then and there. And so I'm kind of used to that. Um, so, yeah, that's... That's another reason why I want to do this. But anyway, all right, let's uh, let's get back to studying. Let's see. Uh, yeah, UK they. 
the the point of that company, the owner wants to grow, and he's not afraid to take shortcuts to do it. Um, I mean, he's nice enough when it's a, when it comes to customer service. You know, obviously, if you call him, and the next day something falls off, he'll send somebody out there to fix it. But there's no telling. You know, okay, is he going to bill you again for it? Is he not? Is you know, is he going to say, oh, well, there was a part that was needed the first time we were out there and we missed it, so we have to bill you for this? No. No. I mean, don't let incompetence be the basis of your profitability. Somebody write that down. That was a good quote. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, Peter, I mean, if you don't at least try to pick a lock when you're locked out, it, in my eyes, if you don't try to, you know, pick the lock to get it open or bypass it non-destructively, then that means, to me, that means you're lazy. Um, you know, and, and we can find in any other profession or industry, uh, whatever, we can find where people just, you know, they want to take the shortcuts, they want to get it done and over with as quickly as possible and move on to the next thing. And that's not always the right thing to do. And, you know, I, I, I can't do that. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's, I, I will tell you this, if I were to come upon one of these in the field and have to get it open, I would legitimately spend between five and 10 minutes trying to pick it. Maybe I could get lucky, maybe not. But, you know, if not, then, then you move on. Then you do something that is non-destructive. Or you go in with a bypass. If that's, you know, in a double door, you can use, um, you know, if, it, if it's in a, a glass front door, which I don't know why you would have an acid cylinder in a glass door, but you might. Um... You know, you could use a, uh, uh, in a double door, you could go through with the little spinny tool. Uh, you could use an Adam's right bypass tool. Um, you know, you could do a few things like that and, and still get in. Or walk around to the back of the building. Maybe the back is easier to pick, you know? Um... Now, uh, Brian, we're we're still debating um, whether here in the U.S., depending on the type of lock, um, whether or not drilling on the first attack should be, well, whether or not drilling should be your first attack, and the consensus for over here is no. Um, and again, like I said before, you know where you are having the land of Ruko that, you know, is different over there, that is expected. Um, but here, having a Schlag or a Quickset or, you know, or even a Medico. Even a Medico. You know, I can pick a Medico in about 10 minutes, give or take, sometimes. Um, and in fact, you know, we can try that. Um, but here... We'll, we'll go over a few other things in here. Um, let's see. Uh, da -da. Some cases, the uh, or in, often lockouts are caused by something other than the client's forgetfulness. In some cases, the cylinder has been vandalized, 
or the lock set has suffered an internal failure. Other cases, the problem is simply a latch or a bolt which is bound in a misaligned strike. If the client has a key that turns in the cylinder at all, your pick set will not solve this problem. You'll need to try to surmise the cause of the lockout. In any case, your goal as a professional locksmith is to open the door without destroying anything you can't replace. Don't tear it up if you can't fix it. If the trim is irreplaceable, steer clear of the trim. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, if the keyway is rare, steer clear of the plug. And unless you have a spare door in your back pocket, don't damage the door. Also, really good advice. As a rule, don't destroy anything that you aren't prepared to replace. Uh... Let's see. Never wrench a mortise cylinder as a means of opening a door. If you do, you are likely to break the entire mortise lock. This is because the set screw is made of harder material than the lock case. Professional locksmiths do not risk ruining... Excuse me, there's a typo in here. The one thing that annoys me with this is the typos. Oh my god. My mother is a retired English teacher and since she homeschooled me all 12 years she hammered good English skills and grammar skills into me and so now I get pissed off when I see a typo anyway professional locksmiths do not risk ruining a $300 mortise lock when sacrificing a $15 cylinder will solve the problem. If you must remove the cylinder from a locked door, carefully drill away the tip of the set screw first. Okay. Then it goes to talk about picking, uh, bypassing, impressioning. We all know how I do it, impressioning. Yeah. Um, see, reading... Yeah, or reading a lot. Visually decoding, I guess. Um, and then it's, let's see, it shows a few of the pick and bypass tools, and then it goes straight into lock set functions. Um, All right. Let's look here, and then I'm going to actually do something. I'm tired of reading right now. I want to put it into my hands. I was, you know, like I was saying earlier, I read, and then I do. And then when I screw it up, I go back and read again. Um, let's see. Yes, Peter. I will, yes. I will go back and write that down. That is a good quote. I have to put that up on a wall somewhere. Rune gave me a great quote last week, too. Morning, Jason. All right. Yeah, we're uh, we're doing, actually doing the LPP kind of reads, but also kind of studies. Um going over the locksmith study guide for the licensing here. Um, just killed a padlock a couple days ago. Yeah. Alright. We're running up to about an hour. Let's pick a lock. Let's just, let's just see. I mean, you know, we've talked about picking, bypassing. Um, I'm going to do two different ones. Um, you know, y'all were right. Can't find jack crap out here anymore. Let's 
since it cleaned everything up. Plus, I want to play with uh, getting this camera set up, turned around. Uh, back. I want to see how well this works in practice. Yeah. Oh, now, this is a nice angle. Y'all can see there's a little bit more light back here. Anyway. Yeah. I kind of I kind of like this. Uh <laughs> Yeah, Peter, apparently it's, uh, yeah, uh, uh, pants with really large back pockets, so you can carry that spare door, spare Adam's right, spare everything else. Um, let's see, now I'm just going to use uh, a couple cheapy tools. Yes, James, I need a study hat. Thank you, Rune. Yes, I I like I like how easy that was to transition, and the camera angle is great too. I mm, why didn't I do this sooner? My spotlighting on the front here, coming from this lamp over here, could be a little bit better, but but it's comfortable. All right, so we're just going to pick a quick set first. Um, I don't know what's in this thing. And as we've talked about before, picking one on the bench is completely different than picking one in the wild. There we go. Hey, hey. I I actually raked it, you know. Single pin pick a couple of them and then uh, turn it. And if you don't have a plug spinner, you at least need to know which way to turn the plug um, in order to get it open. Um, you know, or for a yeah, for an open, complete open or unlock, not just picking the cylinder. Um. Here's a sergeant. See what we get here. Yeah, walk up and you see this sergeant um, in the doorway and say, dang, I need to grab my rotary pick for that. No. Trying to adjust the lighting just a little bit more. I need more lighting. I know that much. All right, and then, here we go. Here's one. I mean, yeah, you would you would have to drill a Medico, right? According to some locksmiths that I've talked to. Um, I'm not gonna use bottom of the key weight tension. I use top of the keyway, but I'll still use my same pick. Uh, and it's been so long since I've picked any of these medicos that I have. 
and it's like picking for the first time. I mean, switching directions is something else, you know, when you're trying to pick a lock open, you know, try, try it in different directions, especially, you know, on the door. Um, if you do have a plug spinner, um, cause obviously, you know, if this were to be in a mortise lock or, um, of course this is actually more of a rim cylinder, uh, type setup, um, you would want to make sure that you're going in the right direction. And maybe using a different pick. You know, if your first one doesn't work, try something else. Confidence killed the cat. <laughs> Anytime you have an audience, yes. Fortunately, here, if you have a, uh, you know, a parent with three hungry kids, um, they typically don't have a medico on the front of their house. Um, obviously, I'm not going to drill this thing. Um, pocket women? I I would like to know that. Actually, I do not have a uh, plug spinner. Um, I need to order one. I should probably do that. Um, but uh, I don't know. That would be interesting to test. And also, Bosnian and Bill actually did a video where he showed raking a medico um i mean you can you can do kind of light tension to try to get the pins turned uh into the sidebar but you know i don't have good luck with raking as it is Um, you know, now obviously when you've got a customer with one of these locks, there we go. There we go. See, and y'all were just about ready to break out the drill, you know? Um, <laughs> so, you know, give it a try when... It works, it works. When it doesn't, you go to what does. Um, you don't want me to prove to you what's in here? I can do that. I can do that. I will do that quickly. Just because that was very quick to open. I will be a good lock sporter and I will prove to you what is in here.
There we go. I do like this camera setup, though. Um, let's see, lucky, yes, that's exactly what that was. That was nothing more than dumb luck. <laughs> I ain't even gonna brag or try to put it any other way. That was luck. And yes, I know that you're supposed to take these apart from the top. Um, Y'all can still see everything. It's all still there. And I really do like this camera setup. I'm going to go on and on about that. So y'all tell me not to. Here's our sidebar. We'll grab our pinning tray. Here's the sidebar. Teeny tiny sidebar spring. Over there. pretty deep cut so yeah it's not like they were all close to the shear line either so there's six there's that you can see yep everything there and then we'll take our top pins out really wasn't planning on uh, completely gutting a lock today but you know Oh well. Sometimes you get lucky. I believe this one, this one may have all standard pins in it. Because it's an older one. Yeah. This is the one that has all standards in it. I picked it before, but not in a while. But there you go. Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, Jason, it's, it's rough being the cat. I am not the cat today. Um... Yeah, the um, the sidebar springs, these itty bitty, itty bitty itties. You would never be able to find those on the floor um, if they decided to go on a vacation, sudden vacation. If they jumped and ran, as we say in the police world. All right, let's uh, let's get back up here. smoothly as possible. Alrighty. There we go. Cool. Alright, so we studied today. We talked about picking. We talked about bypassing. Well, or that bypassing, you know, may be needed. Um... Talked about why. All right, Jason. Um, I will try to be by yours today. I've got a lot of stuff piled up, but I will definitely try. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah, we talked about um, picking why it's better for the customer that you try to pick a lock. You know, 
And even if it's a higher security lock, you can still get them open. Um, sometimes, if you're lucky, you know, sometimes the force is with you and you can get things open and, um, you know, sometimes it's not. And then that's when you break out the rotary pick and you go at it and then just drill the lock out. Um, y'all have seen the one and only time I've ever drilled a lock. So, you know, but I, I sort of grew up picking, so that's always been my first go-to anyway. A lot of locksmiths don't start out by learning how to pick and then becoming locksmiths. They become locksmiths and then learn how to pick. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, um, so there we go. Uh, we've gone over this. Uh, let's see, next week, if, let's see, I've done, I've done some, a lot on the, let's look at the sections here, cylinder servicing, um, opening techniques, lock set functions and lock set servicing, I've done, I feel like I've done a lot of that with these mortise locks and uh, cylindrical bore locks. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable there. Um, next Saturday, let's do basic master keying. How's that sound? And I'm going to try to work on getting um, some automotive locks. I've, I've got a source for it. Um, our uh, fleet manager the chief over our fleet is also the chief uh, mechanic basically um he has a ton of parts spare parts and everything and i know he's got some ignition locks um so i need to try to uh need to try to get some i think i can get some through him if i ask nicely yeah so I'll do that, and next week we will talk about Master Keying. We will learn about that together. We will study it. Be ready to take that test, by golly. Anyway, all right, y'all. Um, let's see. <laughs> James, that's funny. That is funny. Yeah, I mean, you know, if it's like an actual by God hardware store, and, and I, not a big box store, but uh, an actual like locally owned and operated hardware store, you know, they're pretty decent. Um, you know, one of my officers, he's. Uh, one of my part-time officers now, but he, um, he actually used to work at a little hardware store that's just, you know, like right up the street from him. And they did, uh, key copying and also some rekeying stuff, which you, in North Carolina, you do not have to have a license to rekey within like a shop so in other words if you have a hardware store and you have a customer buy a lock set off your shelf and they come to you and say yeah I, I want this lock set but I want it keyed to my original key you do not have to have a license for that in North Carolina um, so they would do rekeying and key copying and, you know, as long as they keep the machine calibrated, then I would hazard a guess and say that you come out with a better key there than you would if you went to Lowe's. I mean, obviously, if you go to a locksmith who does, you know, nothing but keys, you're going to get a better key, obviously. But at the same time, um, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. 
<laughs> but yes, James, we, as Ren said, we shall not tell. Um, Alrighty, folks, so we've done that. I appreciate y'all being around. I uh, appreciate y'all showing up. We had a lot of people show up today. Uh, probably the most I've ever had. So I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I really want to do some more content. Um, like I was talking about last week, I really want to do some more like standalone videos. But I enjoy doing these lives, and I've got the greatest idea. Well, ideas. The one that I've been secretive and coy about before. Um, but then another one popped into my head the other day while watching a, a cooking show. And no, I'm not going to be doing a live cooking show, Rune. <laughs> I know you keep asking me to do that, but no, I, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, maybe one day I might, but the weather's going to have to warm up first. So, anyway, um, but yeah, I really want to get the technology together for that. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get it done, but uh, anyway. All right, y'all. It's time for me to uh, figure out how to cut myself off mid-sentence towards the end here. But I do want to say thank you again to everybody who's came through, uh, who stopped by today. Um, and again, uh, you know, again, thank you for, for being there to help me out. I know a lot of you, the chat is, is really nice and kind of helps y'all out. Uh, in different ways, and I enjoy that. I'm honored to be a part of that, really. Um, but then, you know, also it helps me out. So, we all need just a complete break. We need just a little bubble of either sanity or insanity. Depending on which way you look at it. Um, depending on how crazy we get here in the shop. I've not really been crazy, but, uh, anyway, if y'all missed the, um, the live cleaning video last week, sorry, I've got to get that figured out. All right, we can raise it about here, bring it around. Y'all can see, yeah, that section still needs to be organized. Um, then we can come around here to the rest of the shop, all nice and clean. Very organized, even, even, even that is still organized over there from what I did last week. And I guarantee you the only reason why it's still organized because I ain't been out here. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, probably a project for today will be to um, build a bigger shelf. A uh, bigger shelf here across where my duplicator is. Uh, and um, probably going to raise it up a little bit higher. And then definitely I'm going to get another one of these lights like I have over here. Probably one of the longer ones. Even though I have the fluorescent light up there, I want it to go under uh, the little shelf that I built. And um, maybe make some sort of lighting arrangements over there. I don't know. Like as far as reflective um, to where we get better, better picture in the videos. So anyway, y'all. That's it for today. I am going to uh, look at the comments real quick. Um, I kind of went 
went over uh, Yep, down here. Yeah, you can see that's a mess over there. It's not nearly as much of a mess as it was last week. Ooh, this is kind of an interesting camera angle, isn't it? Wow. I feel like the whole world's looking down on me now. Anyway, um... <laughs> okay. All right, let's see. Yeah, G Key Man. Um, that would be awesome. Um, for the combo lock, yeah. Um, let's see, Dana, uh, which cabinet? Um, nah, like this over here. That's that's always been there. It's part of the sink. Um, oh, you're talking about the uh, big cabinet. Um, that guy over there in the corner. Um. Yeah, it's uh it's been here since I bought the house. Um it's really big, really heavy, and I can't find anybody who wants to buy it that's willing to come pick it up. And I really have no use for it myself. Um Maybe I'll figure out a use for it one day. Honestly, it's in my way right now, and I need to try to figure out how to move it. Um, I mean, it's all lit up and everything. It actually has internal lighting and all that good stuff. It's, it's a, a very expensive cabinet for sure, but doesn't do anything for me. Anyway, um, let's see. All righty guys. Well, y'all have a good one. Um, I'm going to sign off now. Uh, Jason's live is starting in about 40 minutes. Um, <clears throat> so I will, I will try to be over there for a little bit. I've got, um, cleaning I need to do inside the house too. Um, y'all are not going to get a live video of me cleaning inside my house. Sorry. No. Anyway, y'all have a good one and I will see you next time. Stay safe.